in 2010, 38,364 people committed suicide. That's an average of 105 people a day. Suicide is the tenth leading cause of death for all me. <laughs> I'm in a tearful mood. Don't do this to me. <laughs> I thought you lost me, baby. Suicide is the tenth leading cause of death for all ages. In 2010, 2.2 million adults reported having suicidal thoughts, and 1 million have attempted it. That's more than half the entire state of Oregon. Could you imagine? These are all examples of lives without hope. A 2002 survey said that 28% of grade 9 girls and 29% of grade 10 girls attempted to go through weight loss behaviors. 37% of grade 9 girls and 40% of grade 10 girls said that they considered themselves too fat. They had no confidence. What do you guys see? A dark hole. So imagine you're standing there. In order to keep moving on in life, you need to walk into that tunnel. But the deeper you get, the darker it gets. All of these stats are people with no light at the end of their tunnel. They're hopeless. Too many times have I found myself in the darkness. Too many times have I found myself with no light. Too many times have I found myself with no hope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. How about you? Can you guys think of situations in your life where you found yourself standing in a tunnel? with no light to fixate on? You see, the light at the end of the tunnel is hope. And I'm here to tell you today that no matter what you're facing, no matter how dark that tunnel is, there is always hope. And you can always sustain it. All you have to do is surround yourself with family, recognize truth, and believe in something better. This is my family. These are the people I love with all of my heart. That within a second, I would lay my life down for them. The funny thing is, only a small part of them are my relatives. Your family don't have to be relatives. And your relatives don't have to be family. These people are the ones that mean the most to me. I believe Jesus was a real man, and when he was walking on the earth, he said something. Greater love has no one than this, than that he would lay his life down for his friend. I lay my life down for these people. Why? Because when I'm standing in the darkness, they give me hope. When I can't see the light, they do. Let the love of your family be the light to your feet. Susan Cross Whitmore, a psychologist, um, she has her PhD in psychology and she's a professor at the, Ma at the University of Massachusetts. Said that close friends will help you through thick and thin. And that you're less lonely when you have friends. Winston Churchill. Wow. Friendship is the only cement that will hold the world together. Think of your friends. Think of your family. When you're standing there in that dark tunnel, who are the ones that are going to pull you out? Now let's look at this one again. How many times have we had days like this? How many times have you looked in the mirror and said, I'm not good enough today. I'm not pretty enough today. I'm not strong enough today. I'm not smart enough today. Would it be acceptable for me to go up to any of you and say that you're not good enough? You're not pretty enough? Why are you in this course? You're not going to pass. You're not smart enough for that. That is absolutely not acceptable. So why are we allowed to say those things to ourselves? Why are we allowed to tell ourselves that we're not good enough when nobody else is allowed to say it? You see, for me, I, I'm only a couple years out of high school, and I remember insults and rumors flying around the hallways, flocking like ducks flying south for winter. See, the thing about insults, the thing about rumors, is they're false. They're lies. What is a lie? A false statement made with deliberate intent to deceive. Something intended on serving 
or conveying a false impression, an inaccurate or false statement. What's the trend here is false. They're lies. Let's call a spade a spade when we're lying to ourselves. We say, you know what, today I am good enough. Today I am smart enough. Today I can do it. See, when we lie to ourselves, all we're doing is diminishing the hope. We're telling ourselves that we're not good enough to find the light at the end of our tunnel. So when you're looking for light, start with truth. Tell yourself you are good enough. Tell yourself you can do it. Start with the ones you love. And then learn to love yourself, and you'll find hope. But in order to sustain it, you got to believe it. See, I've found a belief in God. That's my hope. You don't have to have the same belief that I do to have hope. Whether you find a God or a faith or science or even just yourself, believe in something. Because that's where sustainability of hope comes from. J.J. Godfrey wrote a book called The Philosophy of Human Hope. And he said that actual hoping is such that actual believing is a necessary ingredient in it. That if one claims to have such hope without related belief, either he has misidentified his disposition as hoping, he does not really hope, or he has failed to acknowledge actual belief. As far as I'm concerned, it's best to believe in something better. You see, hope is finding the light at the end of the tunnel. But sustaining it, as a definition of sustainability says, is keeping from giving way under trial or affliction. So next time you find yourself in that dark tunnel, call in your family. Let them support you. Let them love you. Tell yourself the truth. What do you know about yourself? And believe in something wholeheartedly, something that's worth your passion. An unknown source said that seeing the light at the end of the tunnel gives me hope that it might take a while, but it's going to be all right. All I need to do is keep trying. And that's a, word, that's a truth worth holding on to.